welcome to another edition of the Plus One Interview, and we have a returning guest. It's playoff time, so I had to bring him in here, Mr. Matt Feld. How are you doing, my guy? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Who could believe it? We're almost done with football. The football season's almost over. It's crazy. I mean, less than a month to go, pretty much. Of course, the regular season in the books. Uh, thankfully for us, though, Weather's still pretty good. Weather still feels like early fall. Right, it's, it's uh, definitely nice out there. Uh, we got a lot. We got a lot to unve uh, convey here, unveil with these uh, division one through eight, uh, with these playoffs. And well, first we're just gonna start off in division in the division one bracket. Uh, you know, St. John's Prep got the number one rankings with their win over Boston BC High, who were who were ranked number one before that game. Uh, but in this. In the Division One, there's a couple game. There's a couple games right here that are very intriguing to me. The first, which is Methuen and Franklin, two really good teams, and then on the other side, it's that Severian and Brockton game, a rivalry renewed right there. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned it. Severian and Brockton, a rivalry renewed. These teams used to play uh, almost religiously in the regular season for years before that ended a couple of uh, seasons ago. There's plenty of tr uh, pride and tradition in between these teams. Severian, of course, beginning their quest to try to repeat as Division One Super Bowl champions, while Brockton looking to make a statement in the postseason really for the first time uh, since 2015. One thing that'll be interesting about this game, of course, is that Brockton has played much better the second half of the season. We'll see if that can carry over. But if Severian's healthy, uh, especially with uh, Vincent Busa back at running back, they're very, very tough to beat. And you talked about the other game, Methuen and Franklin. Shane Easton from Methuen, as good as any offensive player in Massachusetts this year, by any sort of statistical measure, he's been outstanding for Methuen out of the backfield on special teams when he's needed as a pass catcher or in the secondary. He's as explosive as they come, especially along Side Joshua Kwaki at H back. Franklin Todd Kylie, first year coach over there from Hollison, where he won plenty. Uh, coach Kylie has done a terrific job at Franklin High, and they've shown that they can compete on the road in big games, losing by one possession to Central Catholic Week One to start the year. Uh, they certainly play in a very tough league when you look at who they've uh, played over the course of the season, including King Phillip and Milford um, and the like. So this should be a very very interesting game. I expect it to be one of the more high scoring games of the playoffs. Uh, I think that's going to be a fun one. Yeah, as you said, Shane Easton, who I think is probably the best play football player in the state, in my opinion. But that offense gets so much, he gets so much attention. But as you said, there's so many other guys on that offense that could also are great playmakers. It's just, just overshadowed by just how great Shane has been this season. But Methuen, this is one of those teams, like the last couple years, it, it feels like they've been getting closer, been getting closer. It feels like if it was a year to break through and try to get to Gillette, this might be that year just because offensively and defensively defensively they're very physical this is um coach, coach said coach ryan said this is one of his more physical defensive teams that he's put out there and and they're also deep too he talked about their depth as well so the, this Methuen team is a dangerous team yeah, there's no question about it. And you see it, of course, they're playing at home against Franklin to start the postseason. That's a long road for Franklin. Methuen has historically, especially recently, played very well at home. If they win, they're likely in line uh, for a matchup with St. John's Prep, who, of course, has made the Super Bowl in the last two years uh, and has won three Super Bowls since 2018. That would be a very intriguing game, in my opinion. Those two teams actually scrimmage each other uh, before the season starts. They've done that for a couple of years now. And you'd be talking about two teams offensively that have the chance to pick up big-time points. You know, Prep's probably going to be a little bit more physical. They're going to try to establish themselves on the ground, which they did a very good job with uh, this past week against BC High to close out the regular season. But that's a game where Shane Easton, to me, is a game-changer. He's the opportunity to talk about it, too. You know, they have to sp opposing teams have to spend so much time game-planning for him that it opens up all alternatives, but Easton is easily able uh, to usually self get himself free, even if two, three, four defenders have their eyes uh, keen on him. So to me, that'd be a very interesting matchup. You've got St. John's Prep um, with freshman star quarterback Chris Vargas, Merrick Barlow, a wide receiver, uh, Riley Selvis has made a name for himself as a freshman wideout, but they'd have certainly their hands full uh, on the defensive side of the ball when it came to what Methuen had to offer. Definitely. And also on Brockton as well. Brockton, quite, this is quite the year for them, especially the year they had last year, which was not so great. What a, what a story for them, the bounce back year that they had this year on the winning side and for them to be able to be in the postseason this year. 100%. 
And for them, you know, if, if they find a way to compete or even somehow upset and beat Severian this year, uh, this week, it really doesn't matter what happens the rest of the season. They could almost lose 58 nothing last week, next week, and, and it would be wildly indifferent. You mentioned, you know, big for them just to get back to the postseason, and now they've got a chance. Look, if I'm Severian, if I'm a top four seed, they're probably the team I don't want to draw just because of the, tr the, the pride and the tradition of the program. Uh, again, I expect Severian to win the game, but um, certainly an intriguing matchup due to the storylines and the history there. Also, uh, the most dangerous team I think is in this bracket or in this Division One is Central Catholic. Talk about a team that had one of the toughest schedules to begin the game to begin the season. I should say, playing three teams in the top in the top ten, competing with all of them, defeating Franklin Week One, uh, competing against Springfield Central, competing against St. John's Prep, competing against Zavarian. They were in all those games. It was just their youth and inexperience was led to them losing. To losing in some of those games but this team this team is dangerous this team is very dangerous they they have the confidence now they their quarterback Caden Smith running backs Jefferson Morales Caden Chase those those guys are really doing well right now and they have a they have a lot of confidence going into this postseason I I think you hit the nail right on the head um uh, you know when you look at them they were very battle tested earlier in the season playing Springfield Central playing Zavarian playing St. John's Prep, and they competed in those games. I mean, particularly Zavarian and St. John's Prep in the second half of those games, they had opportunities to win, tie the game late, whatever it might have you. And this is a very young football team, so no real surprise they maybe necessarily weren't able to close out games early in the season, but they did what they had to do as the season went on. They beat a Chelmsford team to end the season that needed to win to get in the playoffs, so you knew they were going to be desperate. They beat a Bill Ricca team that has certainly shown plenty of signs of offensive power, firepower this year. Uh, they beat Andover, so I I'm pretty impressed by what John Sexton and Central Catholic have been able to do this year, and I think if they were to play Needham in the second round on the road, I think that would be a very, very fun matchup. Needham's another team. They returned a lot of guys. They got the big running back Aiden Williams, who's pretty hard to to bring down. And this this is another team. They they made it to the semifinals last year. And a lot and talking to those guys after their game against Weymouth, they feel like they have they have what it takes this year to make a deeper run and have a chance to win it all this year. Yeah, and I don't think people are still giving them their props, quite frankly. I mean, they're undefeated during their regular season. They lost to Zavarian, who went on to win the Super Bowl by a field goal last year in the semifinals. You mentioned Aiden Williams at running back. Chris Carr, the quarterback, has been very accurate this season, even though they don't expect him to do a ton uh, in terms of looking to throw the ball deep down the field. And their defense has been outstanding. I mean, when they really dominated that game against Weymouth, who had also been undefeated coming into that night, they held Weymouth to their lowest point total of the season to date. Uh, they get a favorable draw for the most part to open the season up. But to me, this is a team that's veteran. They're battle-tested. Uh, they're very well coached. Uh, they're a very, very sneaky team in a lot of respects. But usually teams going into the playoffs, you don't call them sneaky if they're undefeated. But to me, Needham getting overlooked because of the fact that St. John's Prep, BC High, Zavarian, Springfield, of course, have had the success, um, well, for the most part in recent history, BC High the success this year. But to me, Needham a contender as much as anyone. And then some other teams, Lemister with Osiris Lopez taking on Westford Academy. As you just said, Springfield Central is taking on a really good Natick team. And BC High is taking on Andover. Osiris Lopez will probably going to be a candidate for player of the year. Just the season that he had for Lemister and how, how they've been. I, I think they, they'll probably move on with that potential matchup between Lemonster and either Zavarian or Brockton should be very entertaining for round two. No question. Lemon Sterling, you mentioned Osiris Lopez. No one can really make plays at the quarterback position in Massachusetts like he can. He's got the opportunity when things break down to make things happen. And, and if you're looking for a, a, a kid that can help a team almost single-handedly win a football game, it's going to be him. You know, the question for them against a team like a Zavarian, uh, if they were to play them as the year goes on, it's going to be up front, of course. Um, they're still going to have to make sure that Osiris gets protected. They've got to make sure that he's not getting absolutely devastated in terms of hits back there consistently and they're going to have to be able to run the football to alleviate some of that pressure but in terms of a star in terms of someone who can really make an x factor difference and really find a way single-handedly almost to help his team come away with upset wins it's osiris lopez what do you make of springfield central get being number seven that that team i when i saw them they they look poised to be back at gillette the quarter 
they got a bunch of seniors that are experienced. The quarterback, uh, even though he's a sophomore, he's very talented. He's a he's got an arm and he's really smart with the football. Uh, Natick is gonna give him Natick is gonna give him all they got, but I think I think in the end, Springfield Central just might be too explosive for them. I think Springfield Central is the favorite to win this bracket going into the tournament. They've been the seven seed now for the second year in a row, not helped out by some of the Western Mass games that they have to play down the stretch of the season as it pertains to seeding. But they're explosive, they're fast, they're physical, they're battle tested. They'll play anyone at any time. They've showcased that. They've certainly had plenty of postseason success, and they've shown that they can go on the road and win games, um, including in the tournament. They fell just short to Zavarian last year on the road. Uh, that's a brutal second round matchup potentially for BC High if those two sides were to win their first round games you feel like you get in that top four you get two home games that should feel like a reward really not the case and I think if you ask most coaches which team they'd like to avoid early in the playoffs most of them would have said Springfield Central if not all uh, I think Springfield Central is poised I think they're battle tested and like I said earlier they're explosive in all three phases if I had to pick someone to win this bracket right now it would be them Right, we move on to Division Two, and looking at this, uh, are we just poised for another King Philip Catholic Memorial State Championship matchup? Because looking looking at these brackets, there there are some teams in here. So there are some good teams in here, but the way King Philip and Catholic Memorial have played down the stretch of the season, it just looks like it's one of those things that these two are going to meet again for in the state championship game. People were shocked last year when Catholic Memorial lost to Marshfield in the semifinals and, quite frankly, was handled pretty dominantly by Marshfield in the second half of that game. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if Catholic Memorial were to not win the Super Bowl this year, it would be one of the bigger upsets that I can remember in Massachusetts high school sports. They're loaded at every position. Makai Dye at running back very well could end up being the Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, Kais Flannery has filled in and come in at quarterback and has done a very nice job. They've got weapons all over the field. Uh, uh, they're very good up front. They dominated St. John's Prep, which people going into the game thought would be a 50-50 matchup. That game was never in doubt. Uh, they're very good in the secondary. Uh, their team speed is off the charts. The King Philip Marshfield potential semifinal game would be very interesting to me. Marshfield, very senior heavy, very veteran from that team that went to the Super Bowl last year. And, of course, King Philip beat them a year ago in that Super Bowl. King Philip with four different running backs that can really beat you. And of course, as always, good up front. So that to me would really be the matchup to watch would be a King Philip Marshfield semifinal because I'm sorry, I hate to be this way and I hope we get some drama because that never fails and that's never bad for readership or viewership. But I think most people going away expect Catholic Memorial to take Division Two. Yeah, the same. I was looking and I was I was trying and I was like maybe Bishop Fee. <laughs> I like maybe Bishop Fee just because of the defense they play, but I I just don't. Yeah, I just don't think they have enough firepower to withstand what Catholic Memorial brings to the table if those two teams were, were to meet. So yeah, Division Two that that seems like it's a foregone conclusion who we might see. But as you said, you never know what happens. This is football. That's right. You got that right. Moving on to division, division three bracket, uh, Reading overall number one in that bracket going into eight, going at eight and zero. They will take on Lynn English. Mansfield is number three. They'll take on Doherty Memorial, and uh, da, 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 da. Milton, Milton, the the champs from last year. Milton is taking on Dartmouth, but they're on the work. They are on the road. Uh, interesting year for Milton. Because uh, it, it was kind of like up and down until like late in the season where they, they got things going, but they, they weren't as uh, the high powered explosiveness that they had last year. It seemed like that was that took a little step back this year. Yeah, Milton until really week six or seven of the of the regular season was somewhat in danger of missing the postseason altogether. They came, you know, they put it together towards the end of the season, catapulted a bit by the strength of schedule, but certainly not a, a typical repeat champion season. But of course, the team they played in that Super Bowl a year ago, Walpole, is just above them, also on the road, uh, seated 10th going to Hingham. So the two Division Three participants in last year's Super Bowl uh, are going to have to overcome stiff road challenges throughout the postseason if they hope to return back to Gillette Stadium. And I think they're going to have a really tough time doing it. Reading in the two seed, uh, very solid. Uh, they're very dangerous. They're able to beat you on the ground. And in the passing game, I've been very impressed with what Dwayne Spigsbury has been able to do with that offense this year. They put up big points um, in fast spurts. They had an impressive win over Tuxbury High. 
uh, earlier this season, who's a Division Four contender. They, of course, play Central Catholic, and they played them tough. Uh, that just is going to be a very tough team. And then, to me, the two favorites, quite frankly, to get to the Super Bowl come from the same league. You've got the third seed in Mansfield, the fourth seed in North Attleboro, who both played each other in Week 8. Uh, a low-scoring battle that North Attleboro won. I would not be surprised if we got a rematch of that in the Super Bowl. I think those two teams are the best teams in this division. Uh, Mike Redding's done a very good job this year with a relatively inexperienced Mansfield team. And North Attleboro is very, very dangerous, especially behind Ryan Bannon at running back. The game is, is something to behold. And then you, you also look at Bill Ricker. They, up until the game against Methuen, they were playing really well. And then Methuen just the Methuen just went in there and t took away everything they did. Do you think they're, with Steven Gentile at quarterback and some of the stuff they can do offensively, you think they might, if they were to meet with uh, Mansfield, Marshfield, I should, Mansfield, I should say, in the semifinals, you think you think they have a opportunity to, for an upset? Yeah, I do. I mean, right? I mean, uh, I think you mentioned it, but their quarterback play, Gentile has been outstanding this year. He's been very tough for teams to bring down. He's strong. He's got a good arm, but he's just a physical quarterback, um, almost like a running back who can, of course, throw the football playing in that position or even an outside linebacker. Uh, but he's been sensational this year. He's been very tough for opposing teams to figure out. Uh, you know, the thing with them is that if you can't stop them, uh, this sounds like Captain Obvious, but they're hard to beat because their defense, while not superstardom, is still plenty good enough. And so it's very hard to win a shootout with them. So you've got to have the discipline defensively to be able to tackle on first hit so they can't pick up multiple yards um, after the catch, after the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think Bill Ricker gets to the Final Four. I'd be very surprised if they didn't. They, of course, are at a tough place to play. They're well coached. They've got plenty of experience in the tournament. Uh, I would be surprised if the top four seeds in this division did not make the Final Four um, across the board. But you never know. But I would expect, I feel pretty confident that we'll be having a Bill Ricker and Mansfield uh, semifinal matchup. Uh, and then, like, and then one of the Lynn English there talk about a turnaround season for those guys. I think from winning two to three games last year, finishing six and two under a new head coach, and and now they're they're in the playoffs for the first time since 2018, I, I believe. Uh, it, it's been quite the season for those guys and for those seniors for just for this opportunity. But uh, they're, they're gonna have their hands full going on the road and uh, to Reading, but they're, they're quite they've been quite the story this year. Absolutely. And when you look at them, they've scored 21 points or more in six of their games. So they've got plenty of explosiveness on offense, plenty of reason to believe that they can put up points. Uh, you know, the question for them is going to really honestly be, you know, you find in these games, it's really the first eight minutes, uh, eight to ten minutes of the game to see if you can hang in there because you figure the home team in these circumstances come out on fire. John Fiore's team has been in the postseason a bunch. Uh, they certainly played plenty of home games, so you expect that they're going to be not taking anybody lightly. But you mentioned just a great turnaround season, especially offensively, scoring 35 points to finish the game, uh, to finish the regular season against Somerville. Uh, you know, they scored 26 against Malden. They put up 42 and 28 earlier in the year. So I got to think Redding is the heavy favorite in this battle. Um, but still, like you said, just an impressive turnaround season uh, for the Bulldogs. Move on to Division 4 where uh, maybe Duxbury is probably the favorite going into this one. And everybody knows Duxbury. They have physical, big offensive linemen. They wear you out and they make you play their game. And if you play their game, it's not going to be easy for you in this Division 4. Uh, the do you see them as the heavy favorite in this one? Because just the, just the history with Duxbury and then how they always elevate in the postseason, I think the, these guys are are going to have a really uh, might have an easy path to Gillette. I think they're the favorite to get to Gillette. I don't think there's any question about it. Um, you know, I think a Malden Catholic Tuxbury quarterfinal would be an interesting game. Uh, but I certainly think that Duxbury is the favorite to get to Gillette. But then I think it's a toss up. I mean, I think Situates had a great year. Herb Devine has certainly won his fair share in the postseason, a couple of, Bowl, Super Bowl, couple of Super Bowls to his name. And they're very familiar with each other, those two teams. So, And they faced each other at Gillette before. So that would certainly bring plenty of drama with it to the table. 
Grafton has been in the Super Bowl before um, as recently as last year, so you've got to expect that they're going to be more than well prepared and more than well primed if a matchup comes about. I think any of those three teams, Duxbury, Sitchwick, Grafton, uh, could win the whole thing, and I expect that they're going to be in the Final Four as well. Malden Catholic, Tuxbury, probably for that fourth and final spot. I will say that I think a can Duxbury matchup would be interesting. Can has an impressive win on their resume, beating North Attleboro earlier this year. Um, Anthony Fallon's done a really nice job with that team. They've got four or five guys that can beat you offensively. Uh, they're good up front. Uh, I think Duxbury would have the upper hand. I think they'd win, but I think it'd be an interesting second round game. But I agree with you. I think Duxbury's going to end up at Gillette Stadium. And then Bur- and Burlington, too. They have, they've had quite the year offensively with some of the stuff they pull up. And then also Marblehead, they, I mean, Marblehead, they won it a few years ago. So they, And they got the, the coaching experience in that on, on that side of the bracket as well. But yeah, there's some, there's some teams that'll pull up some points. But yeah, I'm looking at Burlington and, and and, and uh, Marblehead to see if they'll make any any noise and shake things up. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned it. I mean, I will say, you know, Burlington to me is an interesting team and they've got an interesting pathway. I, I, the problem with them to me is very similar to Can. I just don't see someone going into situate and winning in the postseason. That has not been something that's happened uh, in the last six years, and I don't think that's going to happen again. Uh, it certainly would have uh, provide plenty of drama at the offensive end of the field for both teams, uh, but I just have a hard time believing that someone's going to go into uh, a Harp Divine team on the road uh, and come away uh, with an upset win. I just I just don't see it happening. Yeah, agreed, agreed. All right, moving on to Division 5, where Shashin Tech is number one one overall in that in that whole bracket uh, undefeated season for them 8 and 0 they got Hanover's the number 2 seed at 6 and 2 Foxborough 5 and 3 Old Rochester 7 and 1 Bishop Fenwick 7 and 1 those are those are the top 5 seeds right there is there is there any other, is there any team in that bracket that you think uh, is going to be a tough matchup I think Foxborough's the favorite uh, running back Ben Angelini is a very good player. He's had a good year for them. They're, of course, the defending champions. And the interesting thing for them is that if they're going to repeat as champions, the odds are they're going to face the same teams in the semifinals and finals that they did a year ago in Hanover and Shawshank Tech. Now, I think Shawshank Washington Tech is very good. I expect them to be at Gillette Stadium as well. I think they'll be right in the mix there. But I think Foxborough is the most battle-tested team. They're the most physical team. Uh, they've certainly had their fair share of, of, of fights, especially with Mansfield, to finish the season. I think, or towards the end of the season, excuse me, uh, I expect them to be right in the mix every step of the way. And if I had to pick, I think Foxborough is the best team, and I think they're going to repeat as champions. And who could forget about Bishop Fenwick, the story about them missing. They had such a great year last year, but not being able to make the postseason. And now they're back in the postseason. They, they take on Norton. But in general, just for that whole the whole program and just to be back in the, in the postseason got to be really refreshing because they missed an opportunity last year. For- Absolutely. Absolutely. And now, of course, if they win, they're likely looking at a long bus ride to Old Rochester uh, down near the Cape, which, of course, is not the best uh, the best victory for them. But you mentioned it. I mean, that program could have taken a serious hit. They weren't allowed to participate in the postseason uh, due to an MIA postseason ban. They certainly could have seen fewer numbers or a downturn in success. Uh, but I'm, but I, you got to feel good for those kids and for that staff to be right back in the mix and, quite frankly, uh, a contender to at least make the Final Four this year. Yeah, it's a, it's a good story. Uh, this, this is probably the most competitive division that is out there. Division 6, I think this is a deep division with a lot of good teams in this one with Hudson being the number one overall. Stoneham, who was at Gillette a few years ago, they're number two. Fairhaven, the defending champions are at number three. Norwell and Abington are at four and five. Really good teams. And then we've got other teams, St. Mary's. St. Mary's is going on the road to take on Sandwich. St. Mary's a very young team. Well, a lot of their playmakers are uh, sophomores or juniors, but St. Mary's, they're healthy. Last year, in the last year, they weren't really healthy going into the postseason, season, but this year they're fully healthy, and I think they they got guys with experience. So I think they're gonna be a dangerous team. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, and I really don't think that there's a favorite. I think this one is wide open. Stoneham plays that way, uh, where they barely throw the ball. They throw the ball about three and a half times per game. Where if you play them from behind, they're very, very hard to beat because they're able to dictate the style of play. Conversely, you get in front of them by a sustainable margin. 
they're very it's very hard for them to catch back up again because of the way that they play but i think this division is wide open and i would not be surprised to see anyone uh including from saint mary's seat in the ninth spot as you said all the way down uh but one factor that i think you have to take into consideration of course is the travel saint mary's having to go to sandwich not an easy commute that's of course a big home field advantage for sandwich in that respect winthrop having to go to abington uh north reading having to go to norwell uh but to me this is wide wide open i think linfield is dangerous um when you look at maddox ivy and ellie and uh tyler adamo and uh you know a couple of their weapons as well linfield's only lost to north attleboro potentially the future division three super bowl champion so they're certainly in the mix uh without question i think this is the most wide open division uh in the state this year and the defending champs, Justin Marks, who had another outstanding season running the ball for Fairhaven. These guys, they, they got the experience, and they, they probably got a lot of confidence just because they had the run last year, and their best player is still out there doing his thing. And their only loss this year was competitive to BC High, who, of course, is the two seed in Division One. So they went out, they challenged themselves this year, and it showcased that they're rewarded for that uh, with the seed that they've gotten. So I completely agree with you. I mean, if they play Stoneham, we might have the record for rush attempts in a, in a single Massachusetts high school football game. The game would be over in about 30 minutes. But uh, I completely agree with you. They should be theoretically, you know, you have to pick someone probably lean their way uh, when all things are considered, but it's not by much. Uh, to me, the, again, they've played the schedule that they've played. They've gone out and challenged themselves. But, um, you know, like, like I said earlier, I think this thing is wide open. And the match and the game that I think it might be the game of the first round is Abington and Winthrop. That game, there's so, there's so much talent. Abington, new head coach, they, they had a great season under the new regime. Winthrop, they also had themselves a good season as well offensively. Uh, I think this is, but you said it correctly, that travel from Winthrop to Abington is going, it might, it might factor in, but that's good. that should be a good matchup right there. Absolutely. You mentioned it. First year coach uh, down in Abington. I mean, if you're talking about replacing a legend. That is not easy to do, period. At the end of the day, Jim Keller had been coaching there for, almost, for over five decades. Uh, and when, as a result, when you've got to replace a legend like that, that's very, very, very hard to do. But to Ed Riley's credit, he's come in, done a great job. He's continued that winning tradition. Uh, I agree with you, though. It could be one of the better first-round matchups. We'll see how Abington does in their first postseason game under Ed Riley. Uh, but for the most part, I expect Abington, again, I'm not going to be surprised by any upsets uh, in this bracket. Uh, as we move it on to where, on to Division 5, where Uxbridge is the f number one overall seed in that one, finishing 8-0. and uh, In your opinion, do you think they're the f heavy favorite going into this one, into this bracket? Yeah, I do. I really do. I mean, when you look at it, all things told, Clinton's had a pretty good year for themselves. I think they can make some noise. Uh, and I'm certainly never going to, you know, count out Northbridge. Um, you know, when you consider all things, you know, consider Ken La, uh, La Chapelle going for his 400th win. Um, 400th win in this week's postseason game, um, which is incredible. By far and away, the state record. Um, so a lot riding, I guess, in that matchup. I'd expect them to beat Oxford at home in the first round. But Oxford is probably the favorite. I think Clinton can make some noise. But um, to me, the big storyline, Ken LaChapelle going to pick up his 400th win as head football coach at Northbridge High School should they win on Friday. Is in Massachusetts history, or, or are they – I know Dibs is still, is still active, but how many active coaches got 400 wins? No, no. He, will, he would be the first one. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's something. That's something. And we had, <laughs> we, we had some coaches get 100, their 100th win and 200 win this year, correct? We did. Yeah, we had a handful of coaches get their 200th win. Um, 200 wins is a lot in football. I mean, you got to think that you got to remember that if that means if you're winning 10 games a year, uh, it takes you 20 years to get to 200 wins. That's a long time. 10 wins in a season is a good season. That means you probably go maybe go 8-1 and one in the regular season and maybe win two playoff games. That's easy, not easy to do. But Tim Morris from Melrose did join the 200-win club um, with a win over Swampscott earlier this season. But it takes a substantial amount. Mike Redding is coming up on his 300th win um, down at Mansfield. So those are big-time milestones. And I don't think, you know, 200 wins in baseball, not quite the same. I mean, excuse me, in football, not quite the same as baseball, basketball, where you're playing double the amount of games per year. Um, you have to have continued, continued success for a long, long period of time.
And last but not least, we got Division 8. Uh, Randolph is back to the number one seed. Randolph won it a few years ago. There's some, t there's some games in this one that I, I, that I like. I, li I like this uh, Kip versus Bourne matchup. Uh, Cathedral, I like them. They're pretty good. And the Neshoba Valley Tech, they finished undefeated. They handled Lynn Tech to close out the, to close out the, se the regular season. Overtime win over Kip Academy where they got a fourth down stop, uh, a fourth and goal stop at the one yard line. Uh, th this is N this Neshoba team. That that's the that's the team I'm keen on right there as the the team that, to make a run. I think that they might be the t that team. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. You got to remember Carver and West Boylston was the Super Bowl matchup last year. Of course, if they play again this year, it'll be in the semifinals. Um, you know, I think Bourne is a very very dangerous team. Uh, you know, when you look at uh, the fact that they've got Caden Doherty back, um, who's been a starter since his freshman year and has been uh, a stud on both lines. Um, you know, Randolph is going to be right back in the mix. Uh, they got one of the best running backs in, in Nate Gomes. Um, the show with Tech is dangerous. So they've got, a. The, to me, when you look at the entire bracket, um, I think you're talking about one that's, again, Fairly wide open. I think I'd give the slight edge to Randolph. But the way that West Boylston plays, very similar to the way that Sodom plays. They're very, very disciplined. They do their style to the best of their ability consistently. They've certainly had plenty of postseason magic over the years. Um, I don't think you can count them out. But I agree with you. I think that Kip Academy, Bourne Games, got plenty of talent on the field. If you're looking for the best first-round game, it's probably that one. Also, in, in in this bracket, I'm also looking at that travel because uh, uh, most of these teams they got to travel quite the distance for for their <laughs> matchup. So that so people don't understand how much that travel can impact the the performance in the first quarter of the game. Absolutely, especially in football where you've got to get off the bus. Usually you should get that hour, hour and a half to warm up. That's certainly what the home team does. You really can't afford to do that if you show up 30 minutes before the game because of traffic. But Lynn Vogue Tech going to Carver, that's not an easy ride, folks. Uh, born going to Kip Academy, not an easy ride by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and so Old Colony going to Narragansett. So no, people do not understand you completely right about the travel impact, how much once you get off the bus, once you actually get yourself loose, it can take you a quarter, a quarter and a half to really get yourself going. But by that point, you could be down already two to three scores and already in a deep hole. So I completely agree with you. Home field advantage in football is absolutely ginormous when you incorporate the statewide travel tournament. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but hey, this is a, this is one of the best times of the year. Playoff football in Massachusetts. There's nothing like it. There's going to be a lot of great games uh, this Friday, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So make sure you check it out. Um, you got any new articles out that people should check out? Uh, we'll be coming up with our Thanksgiving uh, football section uh, in a couple of weeks where we do our human interest stories. Uh, that's always a very, very special time of year, something that we very much look forward to. Uh, but right now, we're getting ready for our postseason coverage, so of course, guys can make sure to check out the Boston Herald, the high school sports section. Uh, I think we do a good as job as anyone under Danny Ventura. So starting this week, of course, you can check out our, our playoff coverage throughout. We'll be covering four games a week and, and look forward to being out there and, and seeing you on the trails. Guy, thank you as always. I will see you at one of these games this week. So, you know, it's always great. Yes, sir, man. Always great. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. That is Matt Feld, ladies and gentlemen. You've been watching the Plus One interview. Have a great day.